Hey, we're Aquilo, and we're hanging out with Rob um, on Front Row Live. How did two guys that were in rock bands that you love metal music, how did you guys like get together and create the sound that you guys are doing right now? Um, it was a weird one, actually. I think we... Well, we had a lot of inspiration from a lot of like, electronic music that was coming out at the time. Like, look, things like Mount Kimby were like a big influence. Was, I got back from university um, and was living at home, mm -hmm. and Ben was living across the road, basically. Yeah. And I just asked him if he wanted to come and write some songs, and then we came over. And that's how that's how really how it started, isn't it? Yeah. Well, we grew up in the same village, and uh, Tom's quite a bit older than me. Right. So um, you make it sound like I'm at least like 20 years. <laughs> it's like it could be my dad. It's like it could three be my dad. or four. No, it's actually five. Is it? Six, I think, maybe. About ten. Is it ten? Fuck it, ten, yeah. Ten. Yeah, ten. We'll say ten. Uh, but basically, Tom's a bit older than me, so when we were younger, we never really hung out. Right. And then, obviously, Tom came back from uni, and then um, we were sort of on the same wavelength, music-wise mm. as well. And, um, yeah, he invited me over, wrote some songs, and then this whole thing sort of started. Right. Um, yeah. And, and, you know, listening to the music... Um, the falsettos is one of the main things that like you pay attention to and is did you guys have any kind of like vocal training is that something that just naturally you guys are just naturally great singers because those falsettos both of you guys have incredible falsettos i appreciate that very much um no not really um the only vocal training i used to have was when we did a course called btech which is a course that you have a, a school that you can choose to do or not and they sort of teach you scales and you might wow. sing a frank sinatra song but it wasn't really any like any real training, no. Yeah. We probably could need it, you know. I think we should probably. We did. I mean, we <laughs> did want basically once before a tour. We were like, we should probably get vocal lessons to like learn how to like treat our voice as well. Right. We went that one time, and I mean, like, she was great. The woman was amazing, but I just it kind of wasn't for us. We knew it all then. Yeah. Yeah. Don't even yeah. Know. She's kind of taught us how to keep our voice in good condition. <laughs> Not that we do what she said. Right. We never do it really. It always changes. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah, we should do, but. No, we're not doing any training. Tequila in the dressing room. We never. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we don't treat our voices how we probably should do. So the way that you guys are singing, how are you guys able to to keep the voices that you have? Because I mean, it sounds like you can be exhausted, or you you know, any any wrong thing, you can ruin that that yeah. high pitch that you guys have. So how do you guys take care of your voices, um, especially when you guys are on tour? Smoke. Just That's perfect. Yeah, no, it's not actually. <laughs> yeah. I honestly yeah. need to give up. Tom Tom smoked for a long time. Yeah, and I think. This may, I think people might f find this a bit ridiculous, but maybe if Tom stopped smoking, he might change his voice. Do you know what I mean? Like, he's been smoking so long, I think it, yeah. it's fine. I think as you just have to warm up, and he does. He warms up before the show. Mm. Don't warm down, which is probably... Yeah, there's, never, there's never enough time to warm down after a show, because right. there's always people there, and yeah. the last thing you want to do is, like, go and sing into a towel <laughs> after a show. Um, <laughs> That's basically how we prepare ourselves. Before a show, we both have, like, a towel or a cushion or something like that right. and then just do vocal like just sing warm ups yeah sing, sing into it either, right. either it being a scale as well we pretty sure we learn that about youtube it's, it's sometimes embarrassing when you're on the in the dressing room with loads of people and you're belting out yeah. Um, yeah. gotta do what you gotta do though exactly. i mean you're on tour for a reason right <laughs> um so tell me a little bit about the album that's out right now silhouettes um as i was mentioning earlier so the 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 title track, Silhouettes, is one of my favorite. Sorry is my other favorite, and Complications is my other favorite. Um, so tell me about creating this album, um, especially because you guys have various like co-writers and producers on this record, including mm. Johnny from Snow Patrol and yeah. Danny from uh, uh, Semi-Sonic. Semi -Sonic? Yeah. 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 So it's like you, because I do my research, man. I like what I, <laughs> I like what you guys are doing. Like. So tell me about going into the studio with these guys, because I mean, it's guys that have been around with their own bands, and yeah. you know now they're writing records. It was amazing actually working with those guys, because they've been there and they've done it all. So it was, it was like, and you could see that. Yeah. You know what I mean, you could really, you could feel that when you were like writing with them. But I think one of the most amazing experiences we had was going over to Iceland to record with a guy called Oliver Arnolds, and which, he, which I've never heard of anybody go to Iceland to record. For <laughs> for starters, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there's, not, there's not much there, and you know, like it's not it's not somewhere people would typically go. I get that, right. but uh, when we found out about this guy called Oliver, we'd been listening to his music, and it turned out, you know, he he wanted to work on our stuff with us. Um, yeah, we went over there for a little while, yeah. and um, he actually composed a lot of the strings, well, all the strings on the album. That's down to Oliver, and um, he produced, I think, like four four songs on the album. Yeah, I think it's four songs on the album. Yeah, so. Um, 
Yeah, hats off to Oliver. But yeah, yeah. that was an experience. Yeah, you went, yeah, we ended up going over and just learning so much. And from everybody that, you know, helped us do, do the record, you just mm. like a masterclass with every single one yeah, of them, like a personal see. masterclass. <laughs> yeah. I often think that going in, going in to write with big songwriters, sometimes there's a little pressure, but especially with, um, with Johnny, Johnny McDade yeah. uh, from Snow Patrol and Dan um, from Sony Sonic, that was, they, those two are just so down to earth, yeah. so just like, in it for the music, on it, it def genuinely feels like that. It really, right. really does. Um, they both have their own quirks, and um, yeah, I think that's why those songs worked with them. It was just it didn't feel like there was pressure with those guys right. at all. Hmm. Yeah. And what I mean, what kind of challenges do they did they? How did they challenge you when you guys were in the studio? Like uh, try new things when you guys were writing or recording. Like what yeah, what went yeah. on? Like, well, we don't have a set way of doing it. I think that's through writing with other people that we've learned different ways of songwriting. But normally speaking, we'd start with like a chord progression and then put melodies over that. Mm -hmm. And we'd never sort of write lyrics before the melody. Do you know what I mean? We'd yeah. always write the lyrics. And, and there's been a couple of different ways that we've sort of tried starting the song with a couple of different writers. As in like with a title maybe right. or um that doesn't happen very often yeah, exactly. you know what i think dan wilson especially was one of the few that's really made you think about the lyrics mm -hmm. but not force you into a corner where you feel like you have to write about a specific thing okay. he's very good at keeping it open the story can stay open until the, so the song's closed right, that's right. what's amazing about it. i think that's also the way he like the yeah closing <laughs> <term. laughs> but yeah he fun. um <laughs> Yeah, there's something about the way, he, I'm assuming he writes like that with everyone else as well, but it's, right. um, it was quite fascinating to work with him. The way now, now, listening to the record, like, and you kind of mentioned, like, leaves the stories open. This is one of the few records that I can listen to and I can actually picture, like, if, if there was a film with it, it would work. You know, like, it, it's almost like a scoring kind of record. Um, how, what was the creative process behind that? Because it's like, people say that it's a cinematic like sound but it, like it really is like does that change like how do you create something like that in the studio it just comes down to like our influences like we yeah. were we were brought up by a lot of like experimental music like mm -hmm. things like mogwai explosions in the sky like 65 days of static and there a lot of them are just like you know um yeah it's just prog it's progressive yeah. yeah it's progressive music it's um so yeah i think we were in massively inspired by that and we wanted to do it in our own way so, I mean, so that's that's why we were so thankful to go over to Iceland and just do these strings with Oliver Arnold's, which right. is just amazing. But yeah, that's that's I think that's why. Yeah, yeah. We just have, we have. I don't think we thought about it too much at the time as well. I mean, we had. It's interesting. We had that album took us four years to make, and obviously over those four wow. years, you you know your your influence is sort of changing. Right. You know, album influences change weekly. Like, do you know mm. what I mean? It's, right. you're, you're always discovering things, and that's. I think when we got to the back end of that album, Oliver really honed it in and turned it into one, mm. one sound that we all we all felt comfortable with. Now, can we talk a little bit about "Sorry"? That that track, the moment it went on, like I, I just had chills. I it's not something that I can relate or whatever for whatever reason, but like it just gave me chills as if it was a personal song to me. So, can you tell me about that song? What was that creative process behind it? Because that just, I mean. I felt like you just got really vulnerable on it. Yeah, well, that was actually one we wrote in LA in oh, Malibu. With <coughs> yeah, yeah, with Johnny. Um, so yeah, it was a really good session actually. It was an amazing place to be. Johnny, so I've always thought with Snow Patrol, the lyrics are very, um, they're very to the point. Uh -huh. Almost sometimes it feels a little bit like uncomfortable. Right. And I think that that with with sorry, I mean, like yeah. we even dropped the line. You know, I was being in Silverdale. And I actually felt really uncomfortable at the start yeah. with that. I didn't really want to say like, the name. Great. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like, you know, the national could pull things like that off, but right. maybe maybe not us. But I think, yeah, Johnny was very set in his way and was like, nah, <laughs> what's going on? Yeah, yeah he, he, I think he sort of taught us to write far more um, literal. Yeah. Um, much like with the guy from Counting Crows, you know, the way it's, it, it sort of sounds like he's telling you as it was. Right. Um, yeah. That's, sorry. Is that is that like a style that you feel more comfortable doing now, or is that still You're something that? Um, I, think you, um, I think you'll find on the new music. I think that within actually, you, yeah, you within guys did yeah, that exactly. Yeah, on the new music, it does feel a little bit more literal. Um, I, I, you know, that, that's not saying stone. I'm not saying it's all going to be like that. Right. But we're starting to become more comfortable actually it's talking about real. things yeah. as as they were. Yeah. What do you think? What do you think uh, got you more comfortable to open up like that? Is it the experience that you guys are having while you guys are touring? at the moment like is it just because you guys have experienced so much time with so many influences. great writers yeah i think it must be our, like our influence like ben was saying they change and they evolve mm. like weekly so yeah i guess we're more comfortable in sort of 
doing things that we weren't necessarily as comfortable right. in, in the, fir the first time round. You know, it's a, it, it's a bit different this album. Right. Well, the one that yeah, we're working new, on now. Yeah, the new album is very much like you said just before. Silhouettes. You know, we worked with a lot of people, mm -hmm. and I think that's that's mainly down to the fact it took four years. You know, like over four years, you're going to meet loads of people. You're going right. to write songs with people in four years' time. Right. And um, with this one, um, so far, it just it has mainly been me and Tom just writing the music, probably producing it all ourselves as well. Mm. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what people's take is on that. And how do you feel this time around going into the studio? Uh, what do you feel matured the most as you guys are creating uh, these new tracks? Well, I think production technique sort of um, changed. And that's, again, through working with other people, other producers, and right. just looking and watching and just learning as much as you possibly can. We actually have just moved into our own studio. Um, uh, in London, which is just amazing, and I think it's actually changed a lot. Yeah. We, we normally have it in our. There's gonna be new albums every week. Exactly, <laughs> an, album, what, an album. We, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we had our equipment set up in um, our living room, and it, it, it became a bit hectic when you got the TV right next to you, and it's yeah. a little bit easier yeah. to go on the Xbox. I don't know. Right. <laughs> but um, now it's good to sort of separate work from home life, and we can actually, you know, get our bus to the studio right. and then just like write, write songs, and it's just I don't know. I think it's a bit of a game changer. Now, now with these two songs that have been released so far, you guys are working on a double album mm -hmm. or a two-sided album. Yeah. Um, so we have one coming up real um, later this month, next month. Yeah. 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 We hope we don't have a specific date yet right. for the release, but it's um, it's coming really, really soon. Mid yeah, mid November. <laughs> That's all we can say. There's no specific day yet, but yeah. Mid what made you guys want to do like a double album um, right after this album? That I mean, it's still a fresh album. Yeah, I was, we were saying to someone before. I think. It's Basically, once we'd finished the first album, you know, we n normally people tour their first album straight off the back. Right. Um, <coughs> but we we had some time, um, and it, we sort of felt the need to make music. It felt it came sort of naturally, and I think in this day and age, like you can actually just put music out as it comes. You don't have to wait to f you know finish a twelve a twelve song album right. and then stick it out. You, you can just put it out as it, as you go along, um, and also people digest music differently now. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I only really listen to full-length al albums if I've got the CD in the car because then you start to, you know, you take it in over the time that you've right. been driving. But now, just with, on Spotify and stuff, people are just taking their favourite songs. So, like, why... It, I, I don't know. Let's, it makes sense. It makes sense it to give, makes it, sense. The, give them five songs, let it digest, and then whilst we work on what we feel is comfortable to, right. to call and the album. And for those, for those that haven't heard your music yet, what makes you guys so different from any other artist that's, like, out today? Uh, <laughs> um, what are you guys like mainly about? What we're we about? It's heartbreak and yeah, sad shit. Up. I don't know. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't know. I don't think. We, I don't know. That's a really tough question. That is, that's quite that's a tough question. question. Well, it's we funny that you said that because <laughs> I was gonna say earlier. I was gonna say like I don't normally listen to sad records, but I really love your record. Oh, so, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I mean, you kind of answered my question there. <laughs> I don't know. I think maybe just because it's it, it's it feels real to us, yeah. and I think if it feels real to us, it's probably gonna feel real to the people listening. I don't know. I don't think that makes us any just, different. I think we just like making music that we like to make. Mm. I think we're very lucky to be able to do that. I think about that quite a lot, actually. And yeah, I'm just very, I've been said, we're just happy that, right. that we can put this music out and people give a shit. Right. Because that's just nice. Well, just keep doing it because we need more. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, guys, uh, t tonight's the last day uh, for this tour and it's here in LA. What is next uh, for you guys aside from the release of, of the next record? Just writing minds, keep basically back in the studio and just yeah, back on gonna, it. We're basically we're working out a European and a UK tour. Okay. The dates are pretty close to being put in, but as of yet, it's not confirmed.